So when I told ZeroTech about a couple projects I was working on, one with a bolt gun and one with this BCA-10, which is an AR-10 platform, but it's actually chambered in 6.5. So I'm running some 120 grain OTMs from Federal right now. It's a decent bullet, flies pretty good out of this barrel. And I've got the 4 to 16 on here, and this is something that is right in my wheelhouse for a gas gun. I like this. I tend not to put really high magnification optics on gas guns. I probably won't be throwing a 6 to 36 or a 5 to 40 on a gas gun. I just don't see the practicality in it. And I much more like the idea of the DMR type setup, something like that, staying a little bit lower on the footprint, smaller on the footprint. And this package right here for 4 to 16 is very reasonable. Not to mention the features actually work on this optic, which is a must, it's gotta work. And so I like the way that it lays out, how it sits, the eye relief, the comfort behind here, and then it's just not so huge and gratuitous that it's more than what I need for this optic. This platform is very, very precise with the right ammo. With 140 grainers, I'm getting some really, really good groups out of this. And at distance, I'm seeing repeated accuracy, except for the very, very last round. So if I have a go empty on my magazine, I'm definitely getting a last round hold open um, exchange there and point of impact, which is fascinating. But the reticle is something I'm familiar with. The RMG from Zero Tech is something I've tried out on several optics, and I've actually tried it out on the original Trace Advanced. So go ahead and watch that video if you haven't watched that yet. This is also a 30 millimeter tube, just like the original Trace Advanced was. The Trace Advanced series is going to have some pretty significantly upgraded glass from here, especially the new one. I also did a review on the newest Trace Advanced, which is their 4 to 24. They are now moving into a 5 to 30 with a 34 millimeter tube, I believe. And maybe I'll get a chance to take a look at that one as well in the future. But right now, I'm really enjoying this one on this AR-10 platform with the 30 millimeter tube and the RMG reticle. Okay, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to take a few shots here. You should be able to hear it if I turn my mic off. I'm going to, let's see. Yeah, right there. I'm going to hit uh, a 10 inch, an 8 inch, and a 6 inch plate at 300. And you should be able to hear those. It's definitely not difficult with this ammo, this optic combination, even with the sun setting right over there. So between the 6 to 24 Vengeance, the 4 to 16, and also the 5 to 25, which I've done a review on, I think I can see some different applications for these. Although they all had the RMG reticle, I can see the 4 to 16 making a lot more sense for people who just don't need, first of all, a lot of power. You don't need the, the big bell on the end. Maybe you're not shooting in low light situations where you need just extreme contrast in every bit of it, or maybe you want to keep a lighter footprint and a smaller footprint. I can see the 4 to 16 making a lot of sense there. Maybe the 5 to 25 Vengeance for people who want to compete do NRL 22. Those have a lot, the 5 to 25s have a lot of features. They're pretty good. Um, if I remember correctly, I'd have to go back and look real quick. 
but I think the parallax goes lower on the 4 to 16, which is kind of exciting to me. I like parallax that will go down that close. This goes down to 15 yards. The 6 to 24 will go down to 10 yards. So there is a difference there. And if you're an air gunner, that 6 to 24 might make more sense for you. For me, I'm going to say if I could only have one and I was going on a bolt gun, I would probably lean towards the 5 to 25 just because I do think it's usable. I mostly shoot it on like 14 to 16 power, but I really like that model. Okay, that's just the way I like it. But with gas guns, I actually would lean towards the 4 to 16. I think the footprint makes a lot more sense. Um, all of them have uniformly smooth features. The parallax is very, very smooth. The magnification dial or ring is very, very smooth. The turrets on all of them, all the, the Vengeance models that I've used, the 5 to 25, the 4 to 16, and the 6 to 24, all of the turrets feel the same and have a uh, similar or same scalloping pattern in here. So not tough when it's really cold out, not tough to get a hold of when it's sweaty and hot out like today has been. Nice and tactile with good feedback. Let me just let you hear these real quick. So listen to this. Mosquitoes are terrible out here. Um, the tactileness is not a concern at all. They're very easy to discern between single clicks. The spacing is good. I actually really like the spacing on these. If you like a little tighter spacing and perhaps better glass quality, you maybe need up that 24 power, I would look at the Trace Advanced 4 to 24, their 30 millimeter version that they have out on the market right now. That one has tighter clicks. They are superior turrets in my opinion, and they should be at the price point for the Trace Advanced series. But I don't think uh, return to zero or tracking is like bad on these at all. I, I've actually noticed that my data lined up exactly with what I expected, so I don't discern personally any tracking error or return to zero error. I don't discern any of that, but I just know that the Trace Advanced series is advanced. They are superior optically, and then internally there's going to be some differences there. Um, definitely lenses for sure are going to be different but yeah when it comes to a gas gun i suppose this would be my go-to now i am missing the assist here and i'm going to go ahead and plug in a little clip of what the assist looks like because it's on my 6 to 24 right now and i broke the one that was on here the way that i broke it was i was an idiot and i over tensioned it i cranked on it when it wasn't necessary it was already tight it was already on there but i just noticed that i still had room to tension um so even though it was clamped on appropriately, I kept going a little bit, and that's just not necessary. If you look at the design of those, they have a little gap in there, and the Allen is bringing the metal closer to closer on top, but then there's little lips that meet around this. Now, thank goodness that this is very, very smooth. It does not take a lot of effort to move this back and forth all the way, and it already has a nub built into it, which is genius. I wish everybody did this. But I did break the other one. It was totally user error. It is not a design issue. It's just a me issue, guys. So sorry, Zero Tech. I kind of pulled a dummy there. But I guess the upside is I don't have to have it. This is pretty smooth. And typically on the gas gun, I'm just going to leave it. If I'm shooting long distance, I'm just going to leave it 12, 14 power somewhere in there. 16 power is usable. Let's talk about iBox a little bit now. Okay, taking a look at the iBox. Now, on this rifle... got a little bit of recoil it's a 6.5 Creedmoor so it's not bad at all but there's a little something there and four power excellent bright image just looks terrific the fat lateral lines that are extreme edges you know it's a first focal plane so those fat lateral lines and the vertical lines that kind of point you towards the center of glass you don't need the illumination on something like this and, and you're saving money anyway so there's no illumination to worry about but it brings me to the center of the glass. And of course, at four power, I cannot see the center dot. My eyes just can't do that. That is way too small. But it, the reticle itself 
carries over. There's enough there meeting towards the center that at four power, if I was hunting with this or shooting something relatively close, I definitely could put that reticle right on a body and have enough contrast between reticle and brown fur like a deer or um, maybe a pronghorn, something like that. I definitely could have the contrast I needed even at four power shooting close. And remember, this parallax is down to 15 yards. So I can take a really close shot right out of the deer stand like I typically would. But if I move up a little bit, let's go up to 10 power. Just jump right up to 10. Eye box is still forgiving. I feel comfortable. I get right behind the rifle. I'm still seeing a bright image. I still have contrast. I can actually just start to pick out at 10 power my 6.5 Creedmoor impacts on white paper at 300 yards. And I don't have good sunlight on it. It is in a shadow. Yeah, that's not bad. Eye box is still forgiving. Reticle is really coming into its own. I think at 10 power, that center dot is, is pretty good. That's, for me, it's about as low as I would go. I have a friend who, he likes small center dots and he could probably shoot it on seven or eight power. I don't have hawk vision, so I need it 10 or 12 power before I'm really comfortable with that center dot. But the rest of the holdover and the windage markers, I've been shooting RMG reticle for a while now. And I've noticed that I can really make sense of those. The numerical indicators on the windage markers, you know, it goes between crosses and dots. And then on the center stadia going down, it actually has dots and there's a breakup. So it's almost like they got the best of both worlds. You can see a lot of the reticle. It does hold up just fine, even on like 10 power, eight power, it holds up fine. You can see a lot of what's going on there. You can read it. You can tell how many mils something's dropping down if you're hitting low or laterally, but then you also are not covering up a huge amount of the target when you get up to 16 power. So that's why I say the 16 power or the four to 16 is pretty ideal because the reticle itself is going to give you the best of everything and and then brightness is going to be pretty good even though you don't have a 56 millimeter objective so we need to get that out of our heads that you have to have a 56 millimeter objective in in order to have a, a bright enough image i just don't think that's true it depends how the optic is set up and the quality of the lenses that they use and with this i think it's fully sufficient and definitely price efficient it's where it should be in the market for glass quality and image contrast is decent Parallax feature does work. It eliminates parallax, and I'm happy with that. One more note about the RMG reticle, just to throw out there. It does have 10th mil breakups, and I like that a lot. The upper quadrant, or negative hold, like hold under, there's a 10th mil breakup there, so you can measure, you can mill things. Man, mosquitoes are terrible. And then you have some horizontal, two options. On the sides there and so i think that makes a lot of sense i like that and it doesn't really cost them anything extra to give you that option so if you don't use it you don't have to worry about it but if you do like things like that it's in there and it's available so this is a good reticle i think it's a good optic to have that reticle in and like i said optimally right around 10 to 14 power really really good on a setup like this and i will take it quite a bit further in video two. Hey, one more thing I should mention. It does come with a really nice neoprene cover. I love these. I think they're fantastic. It protects my gun in the safe or if I'm throwing around the car, if you're on a hunt, these are awesome. If you don't prefer the neoprene ones, which I think they're just as fast to take off, you can also opt for, they have bikini covers inside the same package. So you're going to get both options in there. And I really like that Zero Tech does that but especially the neoprene covers, I think it's a great way to go. And maybe it's just my personal experience, but it's protected my optics, especially my precision optics, which I would like to keep in nice shape. It's protected them when they're in the safe or in the car, or I give it to a dumb friend who doesn't know how to be careful. You know, whatever it is, it's protected them. And it's another extra you didn't have to pay for. So I appreciate the value that ZeroTech is bringing when they have all these extras just included standard with the optic. I forgot all my other... Uh hearing protection my ears at home so I got these big goofy things on there that's fun I should be able to do double taps with this I think the recoil isn't too bad on this rifle at all accuracy is decent enough for sure and with this optical clarity I should be able to get right back on target and get kind of a double tap or at least a, a controlled pair if you will at 630 on an IDPA let's see what happens <laughs> Thank you.
Well, it's been fairly windy and rainy today. I think it kind of tamed out a little bit in the last five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and get my ZeroTech Trace Advanced 20 to 60 power all ready to go. I'm loading up some magazines, throw a camera on that trace advanced here at 630 yards up to my steel plate out there try to focus on that for you obviously i'll be using spotter footage from here but i'm shooting my bca ar10 this is a 6.5 creedmoor ar10 with a heavy contour barrel really like it and enjoy the way it's been shooting i'm using a zero tech 4 to 16 this is from their vengeance line it is a first focal plane and this optic absolutely crushes. I like this one a lot. Normally I'd wait for a nicer day, but I just really enjoy shooting this setup, this combination. Rifle and optic combo have been doing extremely, extremely well together. I'm so impressed at the groups I'm getting. I think the reticle helps a lot, and obviously you have to have a good barrel to put out good groups. I'm gonna warm up, because it's actually about 50 degrees out, so everything's a little chilly. I'm going to warm up some with some s and b this is just their tactical line of ammo i'll put some on steel here and then i'll switch over to some better ammo and get that kind of run through the barrel a few rounds and maybe put some on paper today if the rain totally stops as well All right, so honestly, those were super unreliable. They were very chaotic, and it's not just the wind. It is windy out, but it's it's not just the wind. I think those bullets are terrible, and uh, the rifle has shot so many good bullets well, so I'm going to stick to better stuff. These are at least boat tail haul points. These should be fine. Let's try that one more time. Uh, last time was what was that four to, or it was uh, one out of five for impacts, and it's not the barrel. It's not the the optic. That was probably the ammo. Could be me too, but I think it was the ammo because usually I can go a uh, higher ratio. So let's try it out with these real quick. Here's my one complaint. This thing keeps ripping out my mustache. This uh, attachment point here is tight. It's not loose, but this is that Fab Defense stock that has recoil absorption built into it. It's got like a spring in the stock. And for some reason, this thing is just ripping my mustache out with every shot. I hate that. I don't know what to do about that. I might just have to go to a fixed stock on this one later. Rifle is performing absolutely as it should with proper ammo and the optic is helping me get there. 12 power at 600 yards, easily enough to spot everything, misses, hits. I can tell which hits are mine. Spotting trace in the air, so there's enough contrast and sharpness in the glass that I can actually uh, see that uh, supersonic cone around the bullet flying out there a little bit. And I'm only at 4.1 mils, so it's not like a really, really big drop. So I can track it pretty well out there, staying behind it even while getting my mustache ripped out. 
Take a few shots here at 6.30. Go ahead and refocus a little bit. How about the two-third sized IPA? There's an impact. And I think I'll try one on the flipper and see if I get lucky. Just a touch low. All right, I'm at a thousand yards, actually a thousand thirty to that steel silhouette. I've got my BCA AR10. This is the 65 Creedmoor one with the Zero Tech Vengeance 4 to 16 mounted up on top. I think I've got the right data for this with some Burger 130s, and I'm going to throw a few at that silhouette now that the wind is calming down a little bit. The rain has stopped. I should be able to get a number of impacts on that steel, and hopefully my shot marker stays attached the light indicator from Caldwell and you'll be able to see those impacts as I go. All right, let's change the target a little bit here. A clay pigeon down there above 16. So I'm gonna focus it on that clay pigeon. It's above 16 on the corner. Let's see if I can snag that one with two shots. I'll give it two tries. Well, I regret to make this video, but I just wanted to give you guys an update on those Caldwell shot indicators or those hit markers, the lights, the flashing light there. That's not supposed to be continuously flashing. It's supposed to turn off. And three out of the five that I've bought, when there's a hit like what's right here, the marker is directly behind it. So I didn't actually hit the marker itself. It's just the vibration. The vibration is killing these things. And that was with a 6.5. Come on. And this isn't super thin steel. So I'm getting such a high failure rate on these. I just can't recommend them. I'm going to see if I can get my money back somehow or get another one shipped out, I guess. And I hate to make videos like this. I rarely do because I try to be as positive as I can. But I have such a high failure rate with these. These need to be redesigned. There's an error here. And you're not going to tell me that 3 out of 5 is just my bad luck. I think that's pretty consistent. I don't know. They're practically disposable at this rate. All right, so wrapping this video up now, uh, I definitely think I made myself clear about what configuration I would prefer to put this on, but what could you put this on? Well, everything. It's, it's really not too big to put on anything, and it's also not so small that it's incapable to be put on a very serious bolt action 
rifle if that's the way you want to go. But I think most people, in my opinion, with a 30 millimeter tube, the uh, generous internal elevation for what it has here, good optical clarity, the way that the parallax is configured, and the six mils per revolution, ocular bell size, it just makes sense to me that people would probably put this on some sort of gas gun or auto gun in general. And that's probably what it's going to continue to be for me because it's just, again, 4 to 16 is so optimum for this kind of configuration. I can still go really far, but I can still shoot close for hunting, and it's not very heavy. I like this a lot. This rifle, this setup, has the weight in the places where I think it's important, and it saves weight where I think it's also important. I'm going to say that optically... It is not to the tier of the Trace Advanced series, and you shouldn't expect that. That's like, you know, almost a $2,000 optic, the 4 to 24, and then the uh, new version, the 5 to 30, is probably over $2,000, is my guess. So this is not something I would compare against that. Optically, they are worlds apart because that Japanese glass is just really refined and uh, bigger objectives, more internal elevation. So I'm not going to compare the two. If you're interested in that, Maybe comment down below. I'll see what I can do about possibly reviewing the 5-30 to 30 in the future. But with the 4-24, to 24, that is another tier of optic. And I do recommend saving up and getting one of those too. But if you're like me, I don't need a Trace Advanced on every rifle. There are some rifles where this performance right here is totally adequate. And I'm not going to complain or be bothered down the line. I'm not going to feel the need to upgrade, which is a very important thing to consider. This right here is at home, and I feel comfortable shooting it consistently on this setup. I don't feel limitations with it. So I think the average person out there, they buy this, maybe a 1022, maybe an air rifle. I could definitely see the uh, usage being functional on those as well. But most of us probably going on an AR just because it makes so much sense. But you bolt action guys, uh, you're not going to get held back by this. Hunters, you're not going to get held back by this. The RMG reticle is very functional and it's compatible with most of the kinds of shooting. That's why it's kind of brilliant. It works for just about everything out there. So thanks guys for watching my channel. If you want more magnification, and maybe the Vengeance line is about the price tier you're looking at, but you want a little more magnification, then go ahead and watch my video that I just did on the 6 to 24. The 6 to 24 for only a few dollars more actually has a lot of similar features, some improvements, some things you might actually appreciate more. Uh, but for me, this is actually the one that I prefer the most. This is my favorite model. It might just be because it's performing really well in this combination, but this is the one I would first recommend for people to look at if they're on a budget. And then if they have some extended needs, look at that 6 to 24. And if you are looking for um, kind of a top tier scope, don't look over the Trace Advanced series. They are amazing, stellar optics. Thank you to Zero Tech and BCA for sending this out to the channel. I have lots more videos, guys, coming out in the next week or two. So stay tuned to the channel for those. And if you want to see more with these products, tell me about that down in the comments.